husband and wife, right? So we got a couple here. Income is seven thousand seven fifty a month. Expenses seven thousand two eighty. Debt nine hundred forty seven thousand three fifty. Cash flow starting out four seventy. Personal line of credit unsecured. 15K, 11%, the interest rate. Balance is at zero. There's nothing owed on it currently. Um, <clears throat> we have a bunch of credit cards at 0% right now. We have a property, 300K owed. I think it's the primary. Rent on it is eighteen sixty a month, two point nine percent. Interest rate five twenty nine twenty seven is the principal payment on the eighteen sixty. Seven twenty thirty one goes towards interest. The other six oh seven thirty four is escrow. PMI taxes. Okay, let me see. So I got a credit card for 7,500, one for 8K, one for 2K, another for 2K. And these are all at 0%. And I believe the monthly payment on the 7,500 is 200 a month. The 8K is three, I believe. 150, 150. All right, so let's take a look at this. I wanna make sure I got my numbers right. Yeah, yep, so all those cards are at 0% right now. And we have, so this side is 0%. And then we have another card for 250 and then another credit card for 2,600, okay. Actually, you know what? In this case, I don't think this person has the line of credit just yet. So we're projecting that he's gonna get it because he's been with this bank for quite some time. This 2,600 is a credit card at the same credit union that he wants to get a line of credit with. Um, so we're actually projecting how we're going to use the personal line of credit if he gets approved for uh, 15,000, right? And the first move that I was telling him to do is, first off, we're gonna leave those 0% alone uh, and we're gonna focus on paying off these two things right here that would get my cash flow up a little, right around 150 bucks. So it'd be the 2,600 plus the 250 and then this $7,500 credit card, no, the $2,000 credit card, is uh, one of them is with Macy's, and 500 of it is not on 0%. So he has to pay that in full by next month. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take care of that. So the total chunk from the personal line of credit uh, a portion of it is going to be the 26, the 250, and the 500. So that puts me at 3,350 is going towards credit cards, which I'll get a 150 cash flow gain from that move. And he also has the ability to also redirect money. If I did my notes right redirect money of around 300 back to cash flow. So that bring me from 470 to 770 plus 150 brings me to 920 in cash flow. So I go from 470 to 920 in about a two month period or less. Total cash flow. 920. That's the goal. Two months or less. That's what we want to do. If I have a $15,000 line of credit, 66% of that is 9,000. 
900. So we're going to take the 9,900 minus it from the 3,350. That leaves me with 6,550. Now, because these are at 0%, I'm going to leave them alone, not going to touch it. And we're going to focus on his primary residence. The other debts consist of three other properties that are cash flowing. So it's a wash. Every single month, it's a wash. I don't have to worry about tackling those other rental properties that he has because it's paying for itself anyways. This is where it's costing me money. This is where I'm paying all this interest. I'm trying to recoup this and I'm trying to recoup that escrow. I want to try and remove PMI as fast as possible. So it's a $300,000 left on the property. The value of it is $370,000. I believe it's a regular 30-year mortgage, I believe. And so going back to the line of credit, $6,550 is going to go towards his primary mortgage payment in December 2019, more than likely. Of that $6,550, um, we'll go like this, $1,860 will go towards December's payment. And then the other $4,690 will go towards principal only on the mortgage. So this Four thousand six ninety is going to be all principal. Eighteen sixty is going to satisfy December's payment, which means for that one specific month, I'll have a temporary cash flow gain of eighteen sixty on top of my nine twenty that I gained. Nine twenty plus eighteen sixty for one month of December, I'll be at a cash flow of two thousand seven eighty. So my balance on the line of credit will go up to 9,900. Income will go in, right? In, and then expenses are now 7,280. Let's see, what was that number? 920 plus 1860. 2,780, temporary for one month. 7,280. Minus 2,780. So for the month of December, only 4,500 will come out of the line of credit. 9,900 minus 7,750 plus 4,500. 6,650 plus interest, right? At 11% interest rate, peanuts. Peanuts, 9,900 times 11% divided by 365, $2.98 a day times 30. The most I can possibly pay on that line of credit in one month is $89 if I owed 9,900 for the whole 30 day period, that whole cycle, but that's not the case. So it'll be $89 and probably you go down to about 60, right? So let's see. We got 298 on 9,900 minus income 7,750, 2,150 times 11% divided by 365. 64 cents a day. And then we add back the expenses, right? 6,650 times 11%, $2. Add the three, $5.62. Divide by three. The average I'll pay per month is $1.87 for that one specific month, times 30. $56.24 is about what I'll pay in interest for the first month. And then every month thereafter, it'll drop by probably like 15, 20 bucks, all the way until it hits zero, right? So that's how 
we gather the math in terms of calculating that simple interest cost, right? And so this 5624, how did I offset it? Well, I gained 150 immediately by avoiding paying interest on 16.7% over here on the 250 and then the 2600 I avoid 8.9% over there and then the Macy's the 500 I avoid um, I think Macy's are like it's like 20% so I avoid 20% over there so that helps offset this cost here and then what I did over here, that 4,690, right? On principal only, 529.27. So you could say um, I made 4,690 divided by 529.27. That's 8.86 mortgage payments if I was to just continue to do the 1860, spread it out. So I could possibly remove about eight to 10 months off the mortgage just by shifting 4,690 and then satisfying the mortgage payment for that month itself. So now the very next month, January, less interest will go towards here, more interest will go towards there the very next month. And that is what helps me go a hell of a lot faster than debt snowball, just working with 470, right? So that's uh, something very smart to do. And let's see by, I think what I had in my notes here. Here's some things that go down with his credit cards is in four months from November, he'll have to pay a thousand dollars towards the 7,500 because a thousand of that is not on zero interest okay so we have to worry about paying a thousand on that so six thousand six fifty plus fifty six twenty four so six thousand seven oh six two four minus income seven thousand seven fifty plus expenses are now back to what are they at let me see nine twenty yeah so seven thousand seven fifty minus 920 so income 7750 in expenses go back up because we're at the we have to you know pay that every month not using the line of credit to pay it we did that for the first month so that was just a temporary move 6830 is now my total amount of money coming out of the line of credit each month if i go back to that 920 cash flow let's see what we got 6650 plus the 5624 boom 5786 and that puts me in january let's say four months december january february march so March, let's see what our balance would look like. Come March, I have to spend a thousand to avoid interest over there. And the rest is gonna go into the property again, because remember, we wanna remove PMI as fast as possible. And I think his PMI cost is just under, is, is under $200, I believe. The faster I remove PMI, the more principal money I could have going into the mortgage. And then on a monthly basis, my mortgage payment would drop. So that means less money's coming out of the line of credit. That means it, it'll be faster in terms of how quickly I pay it off each and every month. So that's something very, very important to be aware of for my client here on the board, 4866. That's February, so 4,866.24 in February. And then March, do it again, 3,094.624. 3,094.624 plus a little interest. Maybe I'm at 
a little over 4K owed on the line of credit by March 2020, right? And I have to spend a thousand. So worst case scenario, nine thousand nine hundred minus a thousand minus three nine four six point two four leaves me with another four thousand nine fifty three seventy six that I can put towards the mortgage. Of that four nine five three seven six um, minus eighteen sixty three thousand ninety three seventy six can go towards principal and then that's the mortgage payment the eighteen sixty so we put another three four this is worst case scenario because we're not factoring in I believe he's got a bonus coming in terms of pay they have um, they have good career jobs so they're gonna have a bonus and then I believe tax returns so that's going to help um, and then if I'm not mistaken I think this guy has some savings yes he has about 10k in savings so we might use some of his 10k to apply towards the mortgage either December's chunk or March. It would be smarter to send his savings towards December's chunk to have more of that, you know, knock down the principal on that property. And eventually we'll shift from the personal line of credit, we'll shift over to a HELOC eventually. Um, he's going to find out for me how much he has to pay towards principal to remove PMI number one and so we've got three thousand ninety three seventy six plus four thousand six ninety that's seven thousand seven eighty three seventy six and then this is the brand new mortgage I believe um, I think he's only like a year in or so so I'm going to take that 529.27 principal payments. I'm going to times that from November to, let's say, March. So November, December, January, February, March. So five payments. 529.27 times five payments. 2646.35 plus 7783.76. Ten thousand four thirty eleven is the amount of money that went towards principal on the property. Worst case scenario. Best case is he's got another about ten k. It's about twenty k, and I'm sure by by the time we zero out that second chunk, maybe we're in July ish, maybe August. And we would have removed PMI halfway into 2020. We'll have an additional 200 to work with. And I believe these credit cards start to expire at the end of 2020 going into 2021. And so we would redirect our chunking from the mortgage and come back over to the credit cards to get all this cash flow because the interest rates are expiring. So to get all that cash flow, to then come back to the primary mortgage and start wiping it out again. Do you see how sometimes it does make sense? Sometimes it makes sense to chunk at something else temporarily while we wait for your 0% credit cards to run out. This way we can just maximize your chunks, offset any interest costs I have when I borrow from the line of credit and gain the most amount of cash flow during that same period. So we went from chunking at credit cards a little bit, then we went to the property, then we went back to the credit cards, and then we go back to the property. See how that little bounce? Sometimes it does make more sense to do that, to be, especially at the beginning of a mortgage where damn near all the interest, as you can see, is being tacked on. So small 
uh, a nice starter. I don't want to go too deep into it because he doesn't actually have the line of credit yet, but we were able to project and say, okay, here's what this could potentially look like. You know, I told him, I was like, you know, I don't like to run numbers until I have something solid, but um, I was really confident that he was going to get that because he's, you know, been with this bank for so long. They know him. I think he has his mortgage with that bank and he's got a credit card with that bank. So they pretty much know all his finances, his savings is with that bank, all his banking deposits, wife's income, his income, it's, it's all there. So I was like, I think we shouldn't have an issue. And I overshot the interest and I undershot what he can get approved for in terms of a, of a debt tool. And like I said, we wouldn't even stay at that line of credit for very long. I'd only stay there for about a year because whatever I put in principle is going to show up in equity on the property. I'm going to get a HELOC for like 30, 40 K by like the end of 2020. No doubt. The value of the home is 370. He owes three. By the time we get midway into 2020, it'll be down to like 290 or 280 owed. That's plenty of equity to work with. I would take that equity right the same cash I used to dump in. I'm taking right back out to throw it right back at the amortized and offset my interest. I'll probably get an intro rate of like 3%, 2% on a HELOC. Oh my goodness, that first year is going to be critical in terms of how I you know, start chunking at debt. I'm going to try and shift as much debt as possible, um, especially if I have really, really low borrowing costs like that.